Hey, hello, and in today's video, we are looking at replacements for this, the Drobo 5D3. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about why this device is so hard to find a replacement for at the moment. Why is it so hard to buy? What is going on with Drobo? In fact, what is going on with the Thunderbolt industry? Why is it so hard to get an alternative replacement to this device? And in this video, not only are we going to go through a whole series of different alternatives to this device in both 5-bay and 8-bay as a Thunderbolt 3 RAID solution, but we're also going to talk about the future of Drobo as a brand. So let's run that intro. Okay, so before we go any further, it's worth highlighting, if you're already aware of the situation with Drobo, and you're already aware of the whole thing going on in the Thunderbolt uh, component industry right now, and the only reason you came to this video is so you can get some decent recommendations for either alternatives to upgrade your uh, Drobo 5D3 to something else, or there's a brand new Thunderbolt RAID storage purchase, there should be a chapter in the time bar at the bottom of YouTube there to give you some idea about where to skip forward. But for the rest of you that aren't as clued up, or just want a quick praise, of the situation of Thunderbolt components and Drobo, stick around with me now. So, a number of you may have heard, particularly existing Drobo owners that may have found out via notifications or, you know, kind of mail alerts, uh, the company that owns Drobo, Store Centric, that's actually an amalgam of a few other companies a few years before, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy uh, in 2022. Now, a lot of people saw this coming. The pandemic, the big P, um, did take its toll on a number of different um, kind of hardware sectors around the world as uh, development was moved constantly throughout the year towards different consumer products as people change their working and living habits. Everything from home laptops to home setups, uh, uh, technology that may have been ploughed into the car industry suddenly got pulled away and then all of a sudden people wanted to go for big long drives and buy new cars with this lovely bit of extra income they were now suddenly gaining from none of that public transport and more. Consequently, the hardware industry and particularly hardware development industry really was going through all over the place and Drobo was already having a spot of bother prior to that point. They weren't doing too well. Their hardware development, although again the D3 is a good product and it has certain hardware advantages and even software advantages and things like Beyond Raid that made it stand out, they weren't really a brand that was maximizing uh, what they were doing enough. And um, Consequently, rather than expanding and reinvesting, it seemed like they were shrinking and shrinking. Now, they were hit by these changes during the pandemic and the struggles of that, not just with that development, but changes in working patterns. Uh, but on top of that, as we can see from multiple stories that have been updated since uh, the Chapter 11 filing and indeed my own video that I made uh, on the state of bankruptcy uh, with Drobo that came out way back six months ago. Again, that'll be linked in the description where we went into more detail. Since then, they've been kind of constantly hit by continued problems to do with hardware shortages, in particular certain components pertaining to Thunderbolt 4. Now, Thunderbolt 4 was kind of first revealed in 2020 uh, at CES, Thunderbolt 4, and it was rolled out for release, hopefully by the middle of that year, but of course 2020 was quite a turbulent year for a number of us, and one of the things that happened with that, along with the changing in those demands, changing of hardware development, I hate seagulls, and changing of consumer demands, was certain components uh, already on top of um, uh, shortages in semiconductor industries, droughts in Taiwan, just demand, uh, climate change, stuff like that. The result was that when a lot of hardware development that was planned to move forward from Thunderbolt 3 devices onto Thunderbolt 4 devices, lots of companies had started winding things just a little down on Thunderbolt 3 so they could further that R&D into Thunderbolt 4 uh, devices, Thunderbolt 4 raid enclosures, Thunderbolt 4 adapters, um, docking stations, external drives and more. However, certain components were specifically hit by these shortages and none more so than certain uh, transitional components related to power delivery or PD. Now Texas Instruments was kind of the go-to recommended uh, distributor and provider of some of these components even they couldn't keep up with demand. Some of this uh, was also impacted in those demands due to the larger scale of power consumption and power delivery needed for all of those additional services that Thunderbolt 4 brings over that of Thunderbolt 3 and other versions of Thunderbolt that came before it. As well as that, there is the support, the duality in Thunderbolt 4 support with Thunderbolt 4 as well. And because of that, in order for Thunderbolt 4 to be to maintain, for want of a better word, its purity 
for ROM Thunderbolt 3, because it is still the same bandwidth, remember, they're both 40 gigabits per second, very few compromises could be made. There were certain maneuvers um, uh, for Texas Instruments to supply alternate um, power delivery modules as well. Again, I'll link to all these articles in the description. But the result was that alongside this, there was um, the vying and fighting over power delivery components and power delivery component development away from Thunderbolt 4 to electric cars. Because let's face it, electric cars every year are growing in high demand and necessity, uh, regional and um, climate related taxation in certain regions um, has led to electric cars getting more and more popular as let's face it, globally they should. But the result is that those components are being pulled away from arguably less, you know, worthy uh, um, things like storage towards electric cars to replace that of petrol, diesel, etc. So this enormous infighting has resulted ultimately in brands like Drobo not standing a chance. There's about seven or eight different things hitting them and they just, what can you do to stand up against that? On the one hand, they haven't got enough money coming. They could have redeveloped in their systems a little more. And let's face it, the 5D3 was actually quite an affordable little box when it was more readily available. Um, and Drobo themselves aren't really out for the count. They're making it abundantly clear they're not gone. They're just having a, a time of reassessment, which I think a lot of us would think that is the death knell. That is the writing on the wall. Now, if you've come to this video um, looking for a replacement or an upgrade to your Drobo NAS, then I've already covered that in a previous video. Uh, I've done a video um, last year, this one here. Hopefully the sound won't come through. But in this video, I talk about all the viable alternatives to Drobo, uh, respective uh, different devices in 5 and 8 bay from different brands. Then I recommend you check that out. It's only about um, six months old, but there's lots of information there. There's also a detailed article going through that as well and in that article you will find out more about uh, uh, what happened to Drobo and alternative network attached storage devices but if you've come to this video specifically for Drobo's 5D3 Thunderbolt device then let's crack on with that now. Now before we get on to those alternatives and I know it feels like I'm going slow but hear me out as I say Drobo is not out for the count they're still around and indeed their official page is still active and in theory, some of their solutions are still available. Now, here, this is the UK uh, Amazon front end of Drobo's own store there. And again, we've already looked at Drobo's own pages uh, on uh, back here. Um, although they are still listing a lot of their solutions, it's worth highlighting that in the majority of regions, the only way you're going to get hold of a Drobo 5D3 if you still want one new, and remember, bear in mind that warranty and hardware support is up for debate now, I would say that you've got to go pretty far out there. And if you are going to go for devices that are new, you're going to have to go for pre-populated. Because as you can see, every one of these listings is shown currently unavailable. Now, if we go to different regions, once again, this is the UK. And if we go into the UK here, we can go for the 10TB model here. But even then, it's still not listed. So it was clearly available at one time, and it's gone. If we make our way into the US store... We can see in the US store, we can go for some of these other ones. So say we go for one that's got 8 TBs pre-installed there, still not available. The 4 TB option there, still not available. But it's not all bad news. Some regions have actually still got some stuff. So for example here, this is um, uh, Amazon Germany. As you can see, the enclosure is still readily available there. Now, it says totally out of stock, which means they've still got their saying, they've got stock coming in, fingers crossed. So if you're still looking for a debate, you can go for it there. Alternatively, you look at Amazon Australia, it's still not available there. You can go for the 8-bay if you want in Canada. Some of the 8-bay devices are still available, but again, pre-populated. Consequently, some of those prices are eye-watering. So you won't really are going to hit a wall there. So what is the reason a lot of you may be going for a device like a Drobo? And what do you need to look for in an alternative? The key word isn't even Thunderbolt. It's RAID. Because you may be thinking, oh, well, I want to go for a Thunderbolt 4 device. Well, Thunderbolt 4, there are Thunderbolt 4 RAID enclosures out there that we'll talk about. But frankly, I think you'll be okay at the minute. If you're in a pinch and your current Thunderbolt 3 RAID system is well out of warranty and you're slightly concerned about it, go for a Thunderbolt 3 system at the moment. Because Thunderbolt 4 is still not going to be 
widely commercially available. I would say uh, as a RAID external enclosure in any degree of affordability or any degree of availability, that's not going to be for at least another year. It, they will start cropping up, but they ain't going to be cheap and they ain't going to come in large stock. And almost certainly they will arrive with lower, uh, they'll arrive pre-populated there. So the key word is Thunderbolt RAID because lots of devices will have RAID in their title. But the key there is, do they have internal RAID, otherwise known as hardware RAID, or an SOC or ROC, RAID, uh, RAID controller, or are they software RAID? Now, software RAID is when the system itself is brainless. It's known as a JBOD, J-B-O-D, just a bunch of drives. And that is when your client system, your Mac, your Windows system, has to build the RAID and maintain the RAID. This can lower performance, but it can also be slightly questionable for stability if the system is accidentally uh, disconnected, if there is a power failure, a lot of things like that. That's why a lot of you will kind of go towards RAID enabled devices because in those scenarios much like the Drobo 5D3 that RAID is in system you do sometimes need software to configure the RAID so the software you have here you connect to the device and it tells the device how to set itself up but then after that the RAID is self-managed and it has certain provisions built into the controller to protect it and maintain it in terms of performance and stability long term so RAID onboard RAID it's what's really, really important there. So when you're searching for alternatives, make sure you factor that into your choice. So first thing I want to talk about is the High Point. Now, High Point um, uh, are Eastern manufacturer, not readily available, and a lot of their solutions are actually rebadged, uh, unbranded solutions from out in the East. You hear of brands like Netstore and stuff like that. High Point produce solutions that are very bare bones. They typically only arrive with one year of warranty. There is a 5 base Thunderbolt 3 uh, device in development that should have arrived by now. It's probably going to come in the next couple of months, but there is an 8 bay alternative. Again, hardware RAID, it's got two Thunderbolt 3 controllers, so daisy chaining is possible, and it arrives un populated more on the idea of pop, uh, populated and unpopulated later there but that's probably from them if you want to go super budget but you want to go big in terms of capacity um then they might be the ones to go for there but personally given the availability how long the units take to arrive and that kind of that support um, I would maybe give them a mess, miss unless you're desperate, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, the next thing to talk about is Arika. And Arika is a brand that I talked about on the channel um, some years ago. I don't talk about them as much anymore. The last time I really, really got my teeth into them was uh, around about 2020. Uh, prior to that, when I was at Computex, I met up with Arika there, looked at a lot of their Thunderbolt 3 solutions. And at the moment, some of their largest solutions, uh, the 8 and the 12 bay, are kind of still available. There was, for a period, um, a much larger range of uh, Thunderbolt solutions there. And again, they had them down from 4 bays. There was a 6 bay, an 8 bay, and a 12 bay. But that Thunderbolt 3 range has now been around for quite a few years. And much like a lot of the brands that I discussed, they are were hoping to make the move over to Thunderbolt 4, something that hasn't really transpired. Now, they do currently provide a range of different RAID cards that go into other people's devices, so you may buy um, a RAID-enabled uh, solution for uh, from a brand like Sabrent, or you can go for one of the High Points ones we talked about there, um, OWC. Some of those actually have um, Arika controllers inside them. So Arika is still very much around, but they are just another one of the many brands that were sitting on the fence for that Thunderbolt 4 development, rolling back Thunderbolt 3, and then the pandemic, the shortages, um, shortage of power delivery uh, components and uh, USB 4 components started to occur. So at the moment, if you are looking for an Eureka device, you kind of have to shop around a bit. In the UK, they're a lot harder to find, uh, as you can see from a lot of their kind of general uk retailers there if you make your way into the us you can get hold of them but again it's mainly i would say the us that can still get hold of eureka just because um with fewer units being available from eureka and a very very low production from them they're kind of shipping them very directly to specific outlets particularly apple and video editing suites so if you're looking for an eureka 
which again, I would argue is probably one of the better solutions on the market. I would challenge a Lacey, I would challenge a GTEC, I would challenge Drobo with an Arika, and I've said that before. It's just the fact that they're not really available anymore as much as they were, but they are still out there. Now, you just saw a flick of it there on screen, the budget option. Terramaster. Terramaster, I've talked about a number of their Thunderbolt 3 solutions over the years. They've got everything from a, uh, their 5-bay desktop model there. There's a couple of 2-bays, one of which works as a docking station with a series of uh, different ports on the rear there. They're very, very affordable. Now, with that, I would say the performance is a little less than what some of the other brands will give you out there. Rather than utilizing a RAID card, a lot of these devices use much more uh, uh, efficient onboard RO, uh, RAID on controller components or SOC. Um, but they again, they do the job. A lot of them arrive with two year warranties. There's even uh, talk of expansion, uh, expanded uh, RAID uh, support there. If you move away, you can go into some of their tower devices. We've talked about the D8 before. One second. Things like the D8 series from them, it's kind of um, the logic that goes behind a rack mount device, but it is a desktop form. And you can get an 8 bay version of that with Thunderbolt 3 and onboard RAID handling very easily. Yes, you're talking more than a grand. But still, it is readily available. It does have onboard ra uh, RAID. It's got things like daisy chain connectivity on it and more. And it's got the USB support as well. Again, we are still talking Thunderbolt 3 here. But I would still give them a very, very good plug. But just bear in mind, again, you are talking uh, about a device that is going to have two years of warranty. And it isn't one of the big giant brands. So warranty and support may be a little slower than you're used to on some of the other brands out there. But it doesn't run too noisy. And another thing I will add is the controller inside is a Mega Raid controller using an... Uh, actually, no, it's Mega Raid software on an ARC. And that uh, device there does have a hardware RAID controller card inside rather than an SOC. So you're getting very good value for money there as well. Now, next up, we can talk about some of the pre-populated ones out there. This is the first of our pre-populated ones, SanDisk. Now, I'm sure you've heard about SanDisk already. Of course, you have uh, a subsidiary of WD. They have lots of different kinds of device. And generally, their G-RAID shuttle devices are the go-to for their own RAID video editing for 4K and stuff like that. However, do bear in mind, these are not available unpopulated. We'll talk a little bit more about these later on. Um, but when it comes to whether you're buying from Amazon or if you're going to go directly to WD themselves, when you go to WD themselves, you can only get these devices pre-populated with their own drives. Generally, they are ultra-star drives that you find inside. And these, this means you lack the range of what you want to buy. You can't buy an empty enclosure and put a few drives in and add drives to it if it's got a RAID card that allows you to expand the RAID and you're stuck with whatever drives they include. Yes, it's one RAID, you're getting that overall, but at the same time, it's a lot of money to be expected to pay. I mean, just to put it into perspective, that 48 TB on this 8 bay, that means if it's arriving fully populated, you're getting a lot of small capacity drives. And if you go for things like the other RAID controllers, like the Shuttle RAID SSD, you're only going with their own SSD. So the 8TB is going to be 2TB drives of SATA, but you're not going to be able to use your SSDs. And I can tell you right now, you can pick up a 4-bay Thunderbolt 3 uh, RAID device and 2TB SSDs for a whole lot less than that. Just to put that into perspective, and again, this is an extreme example, if we look at that 5-bay that we talked about just now, that five bay there in pounds, if we get that to load up there on screen, it was about four or five hundred nicker. I've got too many tabs. There you go, five hundred and ninety nine nicker. So if you compare that against what you've seen there with the SSD device there, you've got a lot of money there. And with two TB drives, you can get for about 150, 200 for SSD. That's a tremendous overspend. Yes, single warranty. Yes, it's an enterprise rugged portable product. But that is a lot of money. So bear that in mind with the whole idea of pre-populated versus populated devices. Uh, moving forward, we can talk a little bit more about OWC. Now, I would say of all the brands that uh, have come out of this post-pandemic, post-Thunderbolt chip shortage, Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4 transition period, OWC have done the best. They are one of the few brands out there with a decent range of Thunderbolt 3 RAID-enabled components and Thunderbolt 4 solutions slowly arriving on the market, although arguably those Thunderbolt 4 solutions 
are still more on the lower ebb of things. But it is worth remembering when you look at their Thunder Bay series, because the Thunder Bays are what you need to look at, some of them have raid, some of them don't. And that's a really important difference. So always look for the device, let's bring that up there, that has the word raid in the top, because they have a lot of Thunderbolt um, enabled storage options, but some of them are JBOD, as mentioned earlier, with no onboard RAID, which rely on your so software client, and some of them have got that hardware RAID on board. So to put that into perspective, make sure you go for one of the ones that's got the word RAID in the title. You will see it, they're very specific. There's Thunder Bay 4 and Thunder Bay 4 RAID Edition, which is what you have here. Now again, you will need um, to use the software that you download and install to manage the RAID there. It's a lot more, you no know, frills. It still costs a little bit more than that Terramaster option we talked about there. But I would argue OWC is kind of slowly becoming the darling there. Uh, it's very comparable, I would still say, in terms of hardware architecture to Terramaster as well. But it's a question of the design being a little bit more compact. Now, it does go in. As you can see, there is a more compact version. Uh, this, But some of these are already starting to arrive pre-populated, as mentioned, during this transitional period between Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. Lastly, don't like make a mistake and go for the Thunder Bay 4 thinking Thunder Bay 4 is Thunderbolt 4. That is not the case. It's Thunderbolt 3 and you will see that comparable uh, performance uh, when you look at them uh, in closer detail. And again, they have an 8 bay edition as well and the 8 bay edition allows you to take advantage of you know grouped raids you can take advantage of separate raid containers as well all thanks to that software and of course there are lots of different ports and connections there on the rear to take advantage of including uh, a display port there so do bear that in mind with the thunder bays that they're not all built the same and some of these thunder bay options give you other things like some of them are combined storage and pcie cards you may get one that allows you to take advantage of m2 nvmes you may have one that allows you to install a graphics card or a sound card into a single enclosure that also has storage media now as good as that sounds bear in mind that some of these devices unless you look very closely are thunderbolt 2 some of them doesn't show it there but when you go into them you find out some of them are Thunderbolt 2 in architecture, not Thunderbolt 3. And it's really easy to get that wrong. And you see Thunderbolt 4, you think, oh, that's great. And then you find out later on, you're actually getting a Thunderbolt 2 device, which is not only slower, it's a complete physical difference in connectivity there. So we've already looked at GTEC there. So now let's talk about the other big name, Lacey, Lassie, whatever you want to call them. Um, these have always been a big, big big name in photo editing and let's face it that big orange drive that they have there always a popular hit there and of course they have their own range of raid devices but again we've seen this enormous shift by them to kind of hopefully make the jump on the thunderbolt 4 wind in thunderbolt 3 and this big disparity pandemic shortage of uh, vying for the chips etc has resulted in their range of thunderbolt um three devices being largely related to their two bay devices and one bay now it is a real shame because originally they had the six big and the 12 big device now they weren't cheap my word they were not cheap for a six bay but you've got a longer warranty you've got a great raid controller and they were some of the highest performing raid boxes in the market also again if you went for the larger device there that larger device the 12 big Although technically not readily available in many places because they kind of ended that quite early doors, it became quite a specialist product, it isn't completely unavailable with some places having the unit available there. But just bear in mind that in some locations, the pricing that you see there is not available anymore and it's an un it hasn't been updated from a product feed. But if you're enterprise-led, then that might be the one for you. Ultimately, when you are looking at Lacey as a brand, Right now, at least at the time of recording, maybe a year from now, it'll be different. They are largely associated for their two-bay RAID-enabled devices. And whether you're going to one of their recognized partner outlets, or you're looking at just your general storage areas. So, for example, you've got your five big there, which is Thunderbolt 2. Most of these are either end of life, or you can only get hold of them secondhand. Now, we'll end there talking about Drobo just one last time, because, again, it's not officially over for Drobo. They might 
get purchased and, uh, you know, store centric might sell them somewhere else. And then that branding might get expanded by someone else. The logic, the uh, internal cash in there, they're one of the first to bring that to Daz. That uh, Beyond Raid system there, the internal battery there acting as a right of protection in the event of power failure. Those things may still get absorbed into someone else. They may still continue to exist in one shape or form down the line. But if you're looking at upgrading now and you're outside of your warranty, I wouldn't suggest you wait around. I don't think Drobo, although I say they might recover, statistically they probably won't. And the rest of the market is already still dealing with the difficulties of chip shortages, uh, the lack of those components towards power delivery and USB 4 commitments. And of course, as Thunderbolt 4 um, and its um, and USB 4 start to change its definition, and I think that's the only way we're going to see more of this hardware. You may already have seen it with a lot of devices arriving on the market where it used to say Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 compliant. All of a sudden, they're just saying Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 is not being spoken about. And that's an intentional move by a lot of brands as these components are changing. So if you were already thinking about buying a Drobo device there, yes, their store's open. Yes, their name, their company still exists. But I think you need to jump ship because your storage, if you're wrapping your business around these things, yes, you have got RAID support inside here with those multiple drives to keep you all back if one of those drives fails. But RAID is not a backup. It is a safety net. It is redundancy. It buys you time. And if you bought all those drives at the same time and one drive has died, think about what that means for the other drives. So don't rely on a RAID. And if the system is old and the PSU is old, because even the power supply for Drobo is hard to come by, just remember that if you, the longer you wait, the more in danger you might be. And if you are thinking of something just to tide you over, look at that OWC device. Look at that TerraMaster device because they are very affordable. And some of those devices, like the TerraMaster, if I can ever find it on my myriad of happy little tabs here, the TerraMaster is, for me, probably the more affordable option of the lot because that TerraMaster, it's a 5 bay. There's an 8-bay out there. It's not a lot of money. You can put in just one or two drives and keep it running in the background. Think of it as a £600 insurance plan. Same goes for the OWC Thunderbase. Just make sure you go for a RAID-enabled box. Now, if you need more help, do take advantage of the free advice section over here on the right-hand side of the page on any page here on NAS Compares. It will take you through to our free advice section. And from here, we can make recommendations on the right solution for your needs, your budget, whatever. It's a completely free service. On top of that, you can go to the Ask NAS Compares forum. And on that forum, you'll find out more information about uh, our services and how we can help you while things load tremendously slow there in the background but apart from that thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video um, i know it's a very tricky subject for those of you outside of storage i hope i've kept things as chewable and easy friendly uh, and digestible as possible again use the free advice section if you need help use the community forum if you need further help from me eddie and other people and I will link to all of the products I've discussed today in the description below. Ow, that was my hand. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Have yourself a great week.